What's going on, gang? This is the Roaming Prepper Channel. Thank you for joining me today. Now, once again, we're going to do a situational awareness video, current events, because I'm curious. I honestly think that Europe has completely lost its marbles as a whole. Just the whole continent's gone batshit. Why do I think this? Because of what I keep seeing. I'll be right back. Let's talk about what the hell's going on, because it's absolutely blowing my mind what they're doing. Hang on just a second. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. As always, I try to premiere these videos. So, if you have a question, catch me in the premiere. Hopefully I can make my own premiere. But if I miss it, feel free to jump into the comments and throw any questions, comments, or thoughts you have below the video. So what am I talking about? Well, as we all know, Russia and the Ukrainians are, have been in a pitch battle, which has been dragging on now for nearly two thirds of a year, since what, February, January. Not a good scenario. Disrupted food supplies, disrupted oil, natural gas, it's super disruptive, and it really doesn't seem to be accomplishing anything other than destroying a lot of territory and a lot of equipment and killing people. But now I start looking at the news over there, and I find out that Turkey has recently threatened Greece with military action over a very old uh, maritime dispute that the two countries have had, which go back... I don't know how long it went back. It didn't cover it in the article, but I'd assume it was a while. Now, what's funny, again, think about it. The Persians, when the Persians invaded Greece, if you guys watched the movie 300, you saw the fictionalized account of that battle of Thermopylae. Um, they actually came through Turkey and attacked via the Straits and attacked Greece. Um... So these areas, the Greeks and the what is now Turkey, used to be the Ottoman Empire, have been having battles for generations. However, the more recent one is concerning because they're both NATO members. So apparently, Turkey has a dispute over certain islands and certain maritime pathways with Greece and has actually gone so far, and I'll post the video uh, or post the article in this video, um, has actually gone so far as to threaten a military intervention with Greece, which, of course, everyone else in Europe is going, no, don't do that. We don't need another freaking war on the continent between two completely different countries. So, in any case, those two nations are now in a very heated negotiation trying to resolve the problem, which is the last thing Europe needs. Keep in mind, Turkey controls the straits through which product comes out of the Black Sea. So if Turkey decides not to play nice, guess what? The Ukrainian wheat that's headed to Africa and other places trying to alleviate the food crisis is going to get cut off and it's just going to make things worse. Absolutely doesn't make any sense. This is not something to start a war over, but right now they're threatening each other. But wait, it gets better. Albania, which is on the Mediterranean coast, a former Soviet state, has just accused Iran of hacking it. Now, what the hell does Albania have to do Iran? Do with Iran? Well, apparently there were Iranian dissidents, if you will, who actually tried to get the Khomeini kicked out of power. They failed. So they tried to flee. And Albania gave them sanctuary, which pissed the crap out of Iran. So now Iran keeps hacking Albania's grid and its infrastructure trying to screw with it, which Albania is now saying is an act of economic war. I can't make this stuff up, guys. And I'll put the article in there. So yeah, so are they trying to destroy their own continent? If anything, this should be an absolute example of why we as Americans and Canadians and Mexicans, all of us here in North America, despite our disagreements and despite our puffery, really need to start thinking about what we have in common because what's going on over there is absolutely nutty. I have friends who live in Europe who are American who have been expats and they live over there and one of them gave me the best description. He said, the leaders in this continent are incestuous and it's been going on for 
a thousand years. Basically, everyone's related to somebody and everyone doesn't like someone. Everyone's got a beef. And what we as an American people do not need is to go in there or go and get in between other countries, especially two NATO countries. So think about this scenario. As the economy continues to collapse and have issues, we're going to see Ukraine and Russia continue to beat each other up. We're going to see now Turkey and Greece start arguing over resources, and now you've got Iran and Albania getting into it. Albania, a small country, but still, who's to say that Iran won't go after another NATO country and piss them off too? Absolutely bizarre. It makes me wonder, have they completely lost their freaking minds over there? It really does. So folks, how does this affect you? Here's, here's your takeaway, because you guys know I like to give you a bit of a takeaway. Understand that these little skirmishes, these situations are going to continue to disrupt the supply chain. If you are of the mentality that, oh, somebody will fix it, they'll fix it. Well, they are trying to fight for power. A lot of people believe all the global elites are acting in concert. I don't believe that. I actually believe there's a lot of rich, powerful people who are screwing with each other to become more rich and powerful at the expense of the other guy, and we're all, as a public, getting caught in between. So understand that this will continue to disrupt food supply. It'll reduce the overall wheat and production that is coming into the market. So what we need to do is make sure that you have enough to get through whatever amount of time you think in your situation makes sense to get through a hardship, a shutdown, or a further disruption. Keep in mind, stuff has gotten so expensive now that there are people actually putting on social media, I don't know if I should pay my rent or pay my food. And the truth is, they're not working in a bad job. They're getting paid a fair salary. I'm talking folks making decent money, respectable money, and they still can't make ends meet because things have gotten so expensive. So you need to hedge yourself against that. Make sure you have an emergency stash of food. If you can swing extra cash, great. Have your documents ready in the event you need them. Make sure you make most the most use of your medical and FSA funding if you have it. And most importantly, maintain calm. Okay, these are fights over there, but the ripple effect in the supply chain will affect us here. Make sure you have the food, the meds, the other amenities you need that if there is a disruption, you're not going to be left without. In the end of the day, being prepared, being into preparedness, being a prepper, however you want to call it, is simply knowing how and preparing to withstand a hardship. An SHTF could be a car accident, an SHTF could be a layoff, or it could be six stupid countries getting in a war across the world and screwing up our supply chain here. Any of those can be a problem. Hedge yourself as best you can. I still haven't got my voice back, so apologies for that. In any case, this is the Roaming Prepper Channel signing off. Thank you so much. God bless. Godspeed. Be safe in your travels. Don't forget to like and subscribe and throw any questions you have down below. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. You guys take care.